بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس سو دس ٹاپک از بایو اویلیبلٹی اینڈ بایو ایکویلنس اینڈ وی ول ڈسکس ور از بایو اویلیبلٹی اٹس ویریس ٹائپس اینڈ دین وٹ از بایو ایکویلنس وٹ از اٹس ریلیشن شپ وتھ دا بایو اویلیبلٹی اینڈ وٹ از دا سگنیفیکینس آف کنڈکٹنگ دا بایو اویلیبلٹی اور بایو ایکویلنس اسٹڈیز ایٹ فرسٹ پلیس سو ان ٹو ڈیز لیکچر وی گو نا ڈسکس اباؤٹ آل دیز تھنگس سو فرسٹ آف آل لیٹ می ٹیل یو آل دوز ٹاپکس وچ آر پارٹ آف دس چیپٹر اینڈ وی گو نا ڈسکس آل دیز ٹاپکس ون بائی ون so the topics covered under this chapter are uh, the introduction um, definitely to bioavailability or the bioequivalence and uh, then the types of the bioavailability various parameters um, its significance and how uh, the study of bioavailability studies could be uh, conducted um, their study protocols um, then the next topic c is methods of assessment of bioavailability in this case uh, we will discuss uh, about a very important technique determination of area under the curve with the help of trapezoidal rule so um, which is um, the main method of assessment of bioavailability then the next topic is bioequivalence studies designs components and application and report format Uh, so that would be the part which would be dealing with the bioequivalence um, uh, afterwards the bioavailability concept let's now uh, briefly discuss about the historical significance of conducting bioavailability studies um, on drug formulations before their market appearance uh, till 70s it was never considered important to make the bioavailability studies part of formulation development process or you can say that uh, it was not considered uh, mandatory at least but as we know that different drugs got different therapeutic indices levels so the drug with narrow therapeutic index will soon cross the toxic or minimum toxic concentration as happened in australia in the year 1968 that phenytoin which was being administered to various epileptic patients in a certain dose the patients uh, started to experience toxic effects so um, at that time it was felt that uh, it's extremely important to conduct the bioavailability studies otherwise uh, um, within no times uh, the patients might experience toxic effects if the situation is it doesn't get clear a uh, similar situation happened in 1971 uh, when uh, in that year the different formulations of digoxin coming into the market was providing actually uh, the product with different uh, levels of bioavailabilities now this was an other alarming uh, sign definitely so um, what is the proper definition of bioavailability according to goodman and gilman bioavailability is a term used to indicate the fractional extent to which a dose of drug reaches its site of action or a biological fluid from which the drug has access to its site of action then according to an other definition for bioavailability the term uh, bioavailability is defined as a rate and extent in other words amount of absorption of unchanged drug me or in simple words the uh, amount of the drug from its dosage form or uh, from the site of absorption it means while uh, the bioavailable fraction of the drug would be ratio of the bioavailable dose means the dose which gets bioavailable at the site of action and uh, uh, the administered dose you can see that there are two components to the uh, bioavailability uh, one is the rate of absorption and the second one is the extent of absorption rate of absorption becomes important uh, in case of acute conditions uh, when um, uh, it is very important for a drug to reach uh, as fastly as possible at the site of action um, and uh, basically the rate of absorption is the rapidity with which a drug gets absorbed then there is extent of absorption or uh, those conditions are there when uh, for drug it is important to reach in certain concentration like certain chronic conditions like epilepsy or hypertension and etc 
okay to look into the matter that what could be the possible uh, objectives behind uh, bioavailability studies uh, there are few points which are important to understand uh, number one is uh, that during primary stages of development of suitable dosage form of new drug entity as you know that before a new drug comes into the market um, so during the development of new dosage form different tests and studies are performed including bioavailability studies uh, these studies are also useful to see the influence of excipients and uh, select the most suitable one for the final um, dosage form and uh, apart from that bioavailability studies are equally important uh, when it is uh, experimented that how the product might perform under various uh, patient related factors or similarly when co administered with other drugs how the efficiency of the absorption can be affected similarly when the existing drugs are converted to other formulations or some um, changes are brought about in their existing formulas still bioavailability studies um, illustrate a lot about the final um, uh, absorption efficiency for the product bioavailability studies are extremely important for the drugs which have low therapeutic indices for example cardiac glycoside uh, digoxin is one of the best example or quinidine or phenytoin etc similarly those drugs which have um, very narrow margin of safety along with low therapeutic index for such drugs um, as soon as they cross the minimum toxic concentration the patients start to experience uh, toxic effects for example many antiarrhythmic medications or uh, theophylline or anti-diabetic medications um, the drugs uh, uh, whose peak levels are required for the effects of drugs and uh, uh, those also need to be maintained at that level for prolonged period of time for example phenytoin phenobarbital um, and sodium valproate um, the drugs which are used for the patients uh, of epilepsy and uh, actually these are used uh, on such peak levels and for prolonged period of time in order to prevent uh, seizures it attacks from happening so peak levels uh, uh, should be maintained um, for a longer period of time uh, this situation is also required in case of certain hypertensive or diabetic conditions as well um, or antibiotics which are being used to eradicate the infection uh, properly um, similarly the drugs uh, which are uh, absorbed by active transport for such drugs uh, also the bioavailability studies are highly significant to be conducted because such drugs are substrates for certain transporters which are dependent for their active transport uh, uh, upon certain transporters however these transporters are shared with other drugs as well and this competition um, results in uh, or this is a competition situation which results in um, uh, their saturation and um, the saturation of the transporters so that's why um, uh, in such situation the toxic effects can be witnessed in the patients so bioavailability studies are highly significant for such drugs to um, get conducted um, in order to assess the situation uh, fully okay bioavailability studies are extremely significant to be conducted in case of the drugs which are disintegrated in the alimentary canal um, uh, as we know that the drugs which are orally administered are subjected to disintegration in the alimentary canal or uh, they could go extensive first pass metabolism and one of the example is of fluorpromazine now this drug is an antipsychotic medication which is used for the uh, patients of schizophrenia uh, and uh, we discussed earlier that uh, uh, such uh, uh, antipsychotic medications are required to maintain their peak levels for a prolonged period of time and uh, so in such a sensitive situation if these are being used uh, and uh, they are subjected to in parallel to that they are subjected to metabolism 
first pass metabolism or the disintegration in the alimentary canal as well then uh, definitely their levels could get compromised the required levels at the site of action could get compromised in such a situation and to conduct the bioavailability studies for such formulations to make it sure that uh, these formulations are able to provide the required amount of uh, the drug at site of action um, becomes extremely significant. Similarly, there are formulations that claim to uh, provide or uh, deliver sustained release of the drug. And um, for such drugs uh, to conduct bioavailability studies becomes important because uh, uh, such drugs require also require uh, to provide a certain concentration of drug for a certain prolonged period of time so whatever they are claim claiming uh, if they are not able to do or able to do that that is only possible to confirm uh, through the bioavailability studies because uh, in such cases um, or in such in the in the case of such formulations it is extremely common that um, despite the fact that they are claiming that these are sustained release of the drugs but uh, instead of that what happens that there is a dampening effect means there is a phase when over uh, load or uh, the drugs release too much and then there is a phase when drug stop to get released so uh, through bioavailability studies um, it should be made sure that drug is releasing at a constant pace um, as uh, the formulation claims. Okay students, so this was for now uh, for this lecture and uh, in the upcoming lecture we would be discussing uh, about other topics related to bioavailability which are supposed to be covered under this chapter inshallah.